Okay, guys. So, since everyone wants to see different stuff in this town, we'll meet back here in the park in one hour to go to my battle. Pikachu! But Max is coming with me to talk with some of the trainers, practicing with their water-type Pokémon at the beach. It's going to take us 20 minutes each way. That's nothing. It's going to take me a half an hour to just climb up the mountain to take a look at that golem living there. But I'm going through the woods to the Pokémon Center, and it is the same distance from here to the beach, but it'll only take me 10 minutes. And Brock, you say it'll take you the longest, but you'll be closest to the park. You guys are slowpokes. Well, Ash, I'm looking in the tourist booklet, and that's the time it says it'll take to get to the beach. Oh, but look, it says it'll only take me 20 minutes to get down the mountain. Really? That's weird. I wonder why that is. Pika, I'm sure there's an explanation. Yeah, because we have to move full speed ahead if we're going to see the city and my battle. The times do seem a little random. Tell me about it. Wish I could. But maybe Ciara can tell us what's going on here. Great idea. Let's give her a call. Hi, Ciara. Oh, hey, everyone. Hold on. Let me put this beaker down. <laughs> Sorry, new experiment. The liquids react faster than I expected. Speedy little mixture. Anyway, what can I do for you? Well, I'm trying to meet Brock, May, and Max in the park today before my match. We all want to go around the city exploring. But it's going to take May twice as long to get to the park as me, even though we're about as far away from it. And Brock is the closest, and he said he's going to take three times as long, although less on the way back. What's that about? Hmm. Well, everyone moves at his or her own pace. Yeah, but this is crazy. What's causing the difference? Sounds like you have a need for some answers about speed. Speed is how fast something moves, right? Yep, but it's also how slow something moves. Speed is the measure of the distance an object moves in a certain period of time. Speed is usually measured in miles per hour. That means how many miles something will travel in one hour's time. Let's take a look at a few examples. A person can run up to 22 miles per hour. That means if the runner keeps going at that same speed, she'll cover 22 miles in one hour's time. Sounds pretty fast. That's not bad, until you consider a sports car, which can drive over 200 miles per hour. Wow! But then there's a jet plane. That's 10 times as fast as a car. A jet plane can travel about 2,000 miles per hour. Can anything move faster than that? Very few things, but nothing moves faster than light. A ray of light travels about 186,000 miles per second. But things don't always stay at the same speed. Sometimes they get faster. That's right. When something speeds up, it accelerates. But when they slow down? When an object slows down, it decelerates. So think about it. If you're going downhill... You can go faster. That's right. But when you go uphill, you slow down. You decelerate. I guess that starts to explain some of the weird times for Brock in the mountain. You're right. It would take him more time going uphill and less time going downhill. But, and this is the key, whether it's moving fast or slow, an object will keep going at the same speed unless a force changes it. What do you mean? Well, let me show you. Okay, here's a ball rolling down a perfectly smooth, flat table. It could keep rolling at that same speed until something, a force, stops it, like this cushiony stool. Oh, I get it. So the stool is the force that stopped the ball. And if I set the ball down and started it rolling, it would pick up speed again. It would roll until something stopped it again. Right. And believe me, there are all kinds of forces that can speed things up, slow them down, or stop them from moving altogether. Keep talking. Maybe one of them will help us. All right. Oh, uh, I meant to do that. For this demonstration, I'm going to use a simple ramp to simulate a hill. Okay, now, there's a force called gravity that pulls things down toward the ground. Without gravity, we'd all be floating through the air like in outer space, which would look pretty funny, but be pretty cool. However, it's not like that. So when I roll the ball down the ramp, gravity will act on it. Do you think it'll make the ball speed up or slow down? Pick one. Gravity makes the ball accelerate or speed up, 
because it's an extra force that pulls the ball in the direction it's going, down. All right. Now I'm going to bring out my biggest fan. <sighs> nice. On the downside, it can be hard to walk on a windy day. Let's take a closer look at this wind. It's another kind of force. And it's a strong force. Yeah. Now, when I start the ball rolling this way, with the wind coming that way, will the wind speed it up or slow it down? Pick one. Cool. The wind made the ball decelerate, or slow down, because there was a force, the wind, against it. But what happens when the wind changes direction? Will the ball slow down again, or speed up this time? Neato! It accelerates! But why did it pick up speed this time? The wind was blowing with the ball, instead of against it. The extra force helped the ball accelerate. Now let me put away this fan. I got one more thing to show you. There's one last force to take a look at. It's called friction, or resistance. It's created any time two surfaces rub against each other, and it's about to get a whole lot of messy. The sand will create friction as the ball rolls down the sidewalk. What do you think will happen? Cool. All those grains of sand bumped up against the rubber ball. That created friction, which slowed the ball down. So, the ball decelerated when the wind blew against it, and when it rolled over the sand. You got it. Well, that explains why it'll take May and Max so long to cross the beach. Totally. Well, the sand will definitely slow them down, but only a little. Sand won't create enough resistance to stop them. That is, unless it's quicksand. I don't think I have to worry about that. But can other things create friction? Sure, lots of things, like dirt or grass or pebbles. You just have to figure out what will create the greatest amount of resistance. Well, that covers Brock again. He's got to walk through all those rocks. A mountain full. Not to mention the fact that we already said going up the hill will cause me to slow down. Yeah, and Pikachu and I just have to cross the woods. Speaking of which, we better get started on our sightseeing. So to make sure everyone has enough time, let's meet in two hours. Deal! Thanks for all your help, Ciara. Hey, no problem. Ash, since you have some extra time, want to try a challenge? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Pika! All right, let's measure the speed for five different modes of transportation to see how fast they are. Yeah! Pikachu! Okay, let's get started. Each one has 60 seconds to go around the track. And each lap is one-sixth of a mile. So, if skis can go one-sixth of a mile in a minute, what's the mile per hour speed? Hmm. Well, let's think about it. There are 60 minutes in an hour. So that means one-sixth of a mile multiplied by 60 equals 10. Right. So the speed is 10 miles per hour. What about if the skis made two laps in one minute? Two laps is one-third of a mile. One-third of a mile multiplied by 60 equals 20. So, the speed of the skis would then be 20 miles an hour. Sounds like you're getting the hang of it. Ready to give the other modes of transportation a shot? Yeah, let's do it! Be that be. In 60 seconds, the person riding the bicycle went three laps around the track. Each lap is equal to one-sixth of a mile. Now. Calculate the speed and select the correct answer. How fast was the bicycle? Excellent! Okay, what about the scooter? It did one lap around the track in 60 seconds. Each lap is equal to one-sixth of a mile. How fast was the scooter? Awesome! Okay, what about the skateboard? The person riding it went two laps around the track in 60 seconds. Each lap is equal to one-sixth of a mile. How fast was the skateboard? Awesome! Okay, what about pushing the wheelbarrow? You could go one half of a lap around the track in 60 seconds. Each lap is equal to one-sixth of a mile. How fast was the wheelbarrow? 
Awesome. Okay, what about the motorcycle? It did five laps around the track in 60 seconds. Each lap is equal to one-sixth of a mile. How fast was the motorcycle? Awesome. Cool, Ciara. Now Pikachu and I should get going, so we'll meet up with everyone in time. We'll talk to you later. See ya. Look, a real Slowpoke. Pikachu. Slowpoke. Hmm, it's sort of blocking the path across the river. Pikachu. Hmm, it must be going to fish with the rest of the Slowpoke on the other side of the river. I guess we'll just have to slow down, too. There you are. We've been waiting a while. Where have you been? We thought you got lost. Sorry it took so long. I had the speed figured out, but then our way was blocked by an actual slowpoke. But I thought you had a need for speed. Well, turns out that finding a slowpoke in your path is something else that can make you decelerate. But it was cool getting a chance to see all the slowpoke fishing by the river. Sounds like it was worth the wait. Pikachu and I thought so. But fast or slow, I'm always ready to go. Now let's head to the match. Yeah! yeah. Try again. Try again. Try again. <laughs>